Organization for Rare Diseases as a Rare Clinic uh, Coordinator. I know that we, uh, we are short of time, so I'll try to answer. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you about the one. So I'm sure some of you already know the, the platform. It's a initi uh, Euro initiative. It was uh, launched in 2010 with a single community for CAPS disease, which is a group of auto-inflammatory diseases. And now, uh, four years later, we have 66, 66 disease-specific communities translated into five languages. Uh, English, Spanish, German, and uh, We have 70,000 monthly unique visitors from different, from 170 different countries. But today, let's focus on the first community that was launched in uh, May 2011. But what makes uh, the Rochette community so unique? Uh, I, summarize, I summarize it in three key uh, aspects or three key factors. The first one is that we are working together. Uh, Eurobis is working together along with the patient organizations. The different patient organizations are working with each other to build a common space, a, a global and safe environment where, where patients worldwide can share their stories, can ask questions without um, any problems with the language. I will talk about it, uh, about the translation service later. And the, it's a moderated uh, environment, so it's a, it has a plus quality that makes this community uh, different. So, the conversations to uh, create... Is <laughs> there again? Yeah, this is my, my colleague, Dennis Costello. I mean, some of you may already know him. Uh, so, the conversations to start a community uh, uh, started in December 2010, and a few months later, uh, we launched the final uh, community with the support of uh, the groups in UK, Italy, France, and the US. The following year, uh, Spain, China, and the Vasculitis Foundation joined the community, and eventually the Morocco group uh, become, uh, became a member as well. So these are the patient groups that are listed as uh, partners on the community. Obviously, the community is open to all the patient groups and all the families and patients who want to be part of it. Uh, if you want to add your logo here, you're more than welcome. You are welcome to invite your members or uh, share your story if you want and make this community even uh, bigger. The second uh, key aspect is that the community breaks borders, breaks frontiers because of the translation service that we offer. So the community is translated into five languages, as I said, but it also has translation services on the forum and in the testimonials. So people from different countries who doesn't speak um, English or Spanish can have fluid conversations uh, in their own languages because uh, they can ask a question, for example, in Italian. This one. Uh, Rosa from Italy uh, asked a question in Italian, and then she started the conversation with Gary, who I think is from the US, who obviously doesn't speak Italian. So they are having a, a fluid conversation. Uh, they are using the, the, the translation services we have because we offer or Google Translator or human translation, which is better, but it's not uh, as fast. There. So uh, it's a great for us because she found a place where she can learn from not people only from Italy, but from other countries because maybe then uh, they know more treatments or more options that may work for her. Not only the translation uh, breaks from tears, it, but also the fact that the community is international, it's global, it's open to everybody, even if there is no patient group in your country and you don't know any support group in your area or online, you can join the community, you can find people who can give you answers, who can give you advice, or who, who can uh, point you to interesting resources. 
and for example, you can find people in your country that you didn't know there were other patients in your in your country, in your area. You join the community, you leave a comment in the forum, and maybe in a few weeks you receive a, a, an email saying, hey, I'm from Barcelona too, uh, let's meet, let's have a coffee, um, and share some experiences. And finally, there is a, a, a quality aspect on the community and what makes this community unique as are the moderators mm -hmm. that are uh, usually they are patient um, representatives uh, linked to um, patient organizations who are aware of the latest treatments, maybe some clinical trials, who know the resources, who links, um, who know, can give an appropriate answer to some difficult questions, which I can talk more about it. He's a great moderator. <laughs> and uh, we are very proud of our moderators because thanks to them, the community is one of the... <laughs> ah, this is Spanish. Very little Spanish. Yeah, because I made the screenshots with the Spanish version. So, uh, oh yeah, because the moderators make this community the most active and the biggest community of all the 66 communities we have. We are very impressed with this community because it's very open-minded, we've done lots of things with them, uh, it, their response has been great. We've done a map, I'll talk about it later, we've done an infographic that is doing really, really good. And I would like, I would like to talk about also the, uh, some statistics about the community because I want to give you an idea of how big the community is, how important it is for the uh, patients. So I made this slide uh, yesterday, and the, commun the community yesterday had over 1,300 members. I'm, I'm sure today we have five or six more members. It has eight member patient groups listed, 36 articles published, um, some in English, some in Italian, Spanish, we have also French articles. Uh, we have uh, 87 testimonials translated uh, in five languages. 421 forum topics and thousands of comments and replies. And these two figures are from last year. So the total number of visitors uh, who visited the community at least once uh, a year was 37,000 from 137 different countries. So you can see here the evolution of the members. So the community started in 2011 and the end of the year with 127 members. You can see the exponential growth and now we have passed from 127 to over 1,000, which um, we believe it's a, it's a high su success for the community. Uh, obviously we have members and we also have visitors who maybe didn't join in, in that moment, but come to the community to, to see what's new, what, what has, been, has been published recently. So the, the countries painted in blue uh, are the countries who, who visited the community. Obviously you see that the bigger numbers are in the US and in Europe. You can see the detail here. But we also have Algeria and Australia <coughs> in the top 10. We send these updates to the moderator twice or three times per year so they can see how the community is evolving, how it's, how it's growing, and what we are doing right, what we can improve, what is not working. We also um, send to the moderators, and we like to see the, me and my colleagues, we like to see which are the most visited pages on the on the recommended communities. In the Rochez community, the most visited pages are the FAQ section. We believe that is because the FAQs are translated into five languages. And sometimes it's hard to find it in rare diseases where you only find, find five FAQs only in English. The second most visited pages 
is an article that was published three years ago. It's a very visual article with uh, photos of the uh, main Bocchese manifestations, and it's very popular. It receives thousands of visits um, per year. Then we have this testimonial that was ori originally written in Italian and has been translated, and lots of people come to, to the community, read the article, I read the testimonial and share it on social media. We see it with the Google Analytics that is uh, very, very uh, visited. Then we have this forum conversation called Food Sensitivities with Richesse, and I wanted to spend two minutes with it because it's a unique case that we've um, come across. Uh, Cliff is a dentist in the US and he's also a patient. He joined the community a year ago and posted this comment on the forum. He started a, a homemade study 10 years ago and he asked the two different patients, patients what triggered their outbreaks. So he was gathering all the information and then he joined the community and thought about sharing with the members and asking to more patients. So the, as I said, the, the conversation was started a year ago and has had like 85 replies and I made this screenshot yesterday. So even though the conversation is all, it keeps receiving lots of comments. I say to three or four uh, comments per week, more or less. So people find, I'm sure that people find this uh, conversation on, on Google, on the Google results, because they are looking for information about food and the sheds. So they find this conversation, they read some of the, some of the comments, they, they join, they participate, then the conversation, uh, then they make the conversation bigger. And uh, I would like to say that it's different from the Facebook conversations because this conversation will never be deleted. Sometimes we've seen it in different Facebook groups that all conversations that aren't very recent or that were very important in, in that moment but we are in very recent right now, they are deleted by Facebook because Facebook doesn't care if it's an important conversation or not. It doesn't, it only distinguish between new and old. So uh, we've seen in different Facebook groups that all conversations that were very important were deleted with any warning or explanation and it's gone and we will never be back. And it's a shame because maybe in, this, in that thread there was some interesting links, some medical directions and this won't happen here because the conversation will always stay in the forum and you will be always uh, able to find it and write it again and just start a conversation again. Then, this is the Bechet Syndrome Community Map. Maybe some of you already seen it. Maybe some of you are all on the map. Your spot maybe is here, one of those. I'm not sure when you launch it. I, I say early. Six weeks ago? Eight weeks ago? Okay. Yeah, this summer. Yeah. So it's, for us, it's a really, really huge success for because in only a, a couple of months, I'd say. Yeah. We've had over uh, patients who added their details to the map. And people is adding kind of all their details all the time. Um, we know exactly who that is. Because patients who more exactly, which is international, uh, well, we sure to present them this idea to us, we discussed about it, and we said, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. And we created a form uh, which was uh, completely anonymous. You only, we only asked for a name or a nickname, your location, and if you want, you can add your uh, email address, and if you don't, that's okay. We don't need it because we won't share your in personal information with anybody, or pharma companies, or labs, or businesses. This info is for patients and, and patient groups, nothing else. Uh, we've seen that thanks to this, uh, map, more people is joining the community and saying to the forum, hey, I've seen that there are 20 people living in Australia with the chefs, I would like to meet you. And others say, yeah, I'm from Australia, let's have a coffee. And well, 
we feel proud about it because uh, it's good for them, it's good for, uh, for us, for everybody. This is the feedback we got from the from the map. I, I'm, I'm sure that everybody is very excited. The map has been shared on social media uh, hundreds of times. Uh, people is asking, well, this is a very good idea. We should implement it in our community, and we are thinking of doing the same in other recognized communities. Uh, so this is great. It was a, a great test, and I'm sure that in a few months we'll have even more patients and we can get some good results of it. I don't know. And finally, I wanted to, to mention a little bit the infographic. Uh, maybe some of you already saw it. It was also a patient group initiative. We created, the, the, we designed the poll, the questionnaire, along with the patient organizations. We talked about if they wanted to focus the questionnaire on the diagnosis or on the treatments or on the symptoms and then once the poll was designed and we got a reasonable and real relevant sample we elaborated, uh, we designed an infographic with the main conclusions and we translated the infographic in six languages, even Chinese it was a surprise <laughs> and uh, it was a pleasure for us to see this infographic share, for example, on Twitter, uh, we, we saw a lot of tweets of people saying, I suffer from the shares, uh, sometimes it's difficult to, to explain what this, what, this is, what this disease is and what I've uh, faced, uh, what issues I've faced uh, during the years. I think this uh, infographic illustrates perfectly how, um, how is this disease, how this disease affects patients and uh, what I'm doing. And well, that's it, I wanted to keep it short. But as I said, uh, the community is open to everybody. We are open to new ideas. The map and the infographic were great ideas. And we are open to do whatever you think we can do to, to make bigger the community, to make it more active. Even though it's very active, you, I'm sure you receive a lot of email alerts. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can anytime if you are a patient group and want to be part of the community, it's perfect. Um, if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've talked about the map before quite a few times. Uh, and I have to say, uh, it was Richard's idea. Uh, and I think many of us thought, do you really mean that? We could have a map where people would put things in? The response is fantastic, and mm. some of you are here because of the map. Yeah. Um, so that is, uh, it speaks for itself, and it's, it's just expanding. And I can quite see why other groups are going to say, mm -hmm. Can we please do it as well? Because, well, why not? But, uh, I, I won't take questions because we've overrun so much, but again, any questions or direct, frankly, um, on, on, on the uh, rare disease. So, uh, your order is, is a fantastic organization, I, I've supported. Uh, uh, groups from uh, well all around the world. I mean, uh, I went to their summer school um, in, in the summer in Barcelona, and uh, it was absolutely amazing uh, conference. It was just fantastic. Uh, so, if you want to know anything about the EMA and all their committees, you just ask me because I know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> we spent four days talking about them, which was quite uh, interesting. Uh, but thank you very, very much for that. That's really <laughs> Need me to, to call upon Richard to, to um, sort of really uh, finalise the uh, conference. Um, he has been involved in this, right? Well, as you heard, um, 10 years with the patient conferences, etc. Um, and he's wanted to get into Europe uh, when well, he has, because he, he actually became our, they called him our man in Brussels at one time, um, because he is involved with the EMA, he's involved with a lot of the regulatory bodies and organisations. Um, and he attends, I can't tell you how many meetings he attends, they're just absolutely outstanding. He, his week started by being in the EMA on Monday morning. Um, he came from there late on Wednesday evening, direct from the EMA meetings. He's been here ever since, having conversations, etc. And I think you're flying back on Sunday. 
to go straight to a meeting on Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can't have a better uh, person who, who promotes budgets. Um, we all follow along on his coattails uh, because he's usually <laughs> white. <laughs> so uh, we're very grateful to you, Richard. But, um, thank, you. thank you. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, but Richard would like to find more. Well, it, it's a very uh, short and final thing to say. Uh, I'd really like to thank Rare Connect because uh, it's what has brought us all together. Um, and I think uh, what we'd like to do is we explained a bit of it yesterday and the uh, time has run out on us today, is to go forward as an international community. And I think like Steve said today, it's a little unoften. Uh, and if you don't feel very well and you can't help out at a certain point in time, we understand. We're not expecting everybody to uh, do everything and go at it like a steam train. But if you can help in your own country to just expand a little bit to help us to support, then that's what we're here to do. Um,